So we've all been there, right? When we just buy a cheap watercolour palette because we just want to test it out. And uh, then we discover that the chalkiness is the death of us. So I'm going to show you a little bit of like some tricks that can help you to maybe make this watercolour palette a little bit better. So I got this palette for about $5 and even then I think I was ripped off. It's super cheap, super plasticky, but let's see what the colours are like inside. There are some nice colours here and they do offer you a little bit of a variety for instance, so that's not too bad. It is open. Oh, it broke instantly. <laughs> okay, um, that could be my bad because I've had this for a while, but I'm also going to say it's probably not. could use this as a palette, but also they provide you with these little squares, which is kind of nice. And then the brush is... Uh, not the worst brush that I've ever seen with these cheap sets. Like the hairs seem a little bit fluffy, which is nice. So yeah, let's uh, let's see how it goes. Also, guys, I would like to remind you that I have Emily is Burning restocked in my Etsy shop, but also we have Wishing on a Star and the Slow Disappearance of Olivia Newbury. They have just arrived and they come in a pair because they are sister comics and they look absolutely cool and I'm really, really happy with them. So if you guys fancy grabbing these together, then check out my uh, link in the description for Etsy. And uh, yeah, they're gonna come together like this and I'm really happy and really proud of them. I'm gonna use this brush or try to use it for a little bit. What I want to do first is to activate, I've got my little handy water dropper, you can get these droppers pretty much with like, it's kind of the trend now in skincare, so once you've finished it up, they are really handy for just like, no spill act water activation, and so, you know, it's kind of handy, I mean you could just pour a glass of water over these, but it's easier than making a big old mess but that is entirely up to you. It might not work too well because they are so chalky that it's just kind of like not working well with the water. Like some of them are kind of seeping in, but some of them are like, no, this ain't happening. We don't want you. <laughs> so here we go. Let's use some paper for testing this beautiful palette out. So a good way to get the most out of your watercolor paints is to really keep working it so lots of the pigment and lots of like the color comes off of this block of chalkiness and you can really get like a lot of color on your brush this brush is super cheap and this helps if you want to do something like make color really pop and have a lot of pigment to use so here you go it's not too bad the brush is pretty terrible and then you can add like a lot of water obviously to help bring it all together the brush is not falling apart and it is actually holding water quite well but it's if you see it's like when I try to do like a line it's kind of blending it all over if I get a bit of a better brush and I'm just gonna grab like a little bit of pigment again and then you can see with the brush it's gonna be a lot better like cleaner edges definitely you need a lot of water with this palette because it is so chalky that it, it like dries out the color a little bit quicker but you can see that we get we do get like a fine amount of color for your buck which is pretty nice considering it's so cheap you never know what you could use this for really it's a, probably a great like kids beginner starter pack I know a lot of people say like don't give kids or I read that online what somebody was like don't give kids cheap art supplies because they're just gonna get frustrated with them but I mean like worth learning with them I kind of agree a little bit but it's kind of what you can afford you know so if you can only afford like a cheap set you, it shows that you can do something cool with them so now we're gonna do like water on water I'm just wetting really wetting the area and seeing how the pigment is gonna spread so it's wet on wet is this technique with watercolor uh, I'm gonna use this like pink pink red color yep. and you can see we can do some little effects, which is kind of nice, and we can like maybe blend them a bit. So it's not too bad, it's not like the worst set ever. So obviously I'm using quite like nice expensive paper for this, so I'm thinking like maybe you wouldn't, especially if you could only afford like a cheap colour palette. And the way to like maybe get the best results out of that is to use 
not too much water and just try to be conservative with what you use on the paper. Just be careful not to use too much pigment and water and it should work out a little bit better for you. With these papers, they can kind of take a lot of abuse because that's what like, you know, they've been made to like handle a lot of pigment and a lot of colors. A good way to get the most out of your watercolor palette, like your cheap one, like I said, keep trying to work the paint a little bit more, get it like super thick. You can get like a lot of pigment that way and then load your brush up and make sure like you mix colors together that aren't straight from the palette because sometimes if you do that, it looks very, the artwork kind of turns out quite cheap looking somehow and it seems like oh they've just used the color straight from the palette it's kind of like a generic thing and it does show so if you make like your own colors you can get a more interesting look and feel to your painting so i'm just going to do like a quick set of colors maybe that go together and uh, see like here we have like a much richer color, a much more interesting color than just like the basics. Not that these colors are too bad, but I think sometimes when you buy a cheap set, they can just come with like really basic colors. So you wanna just really like branch out and see what you can create yourself. And that way you can get a lot more out of your palette. These paints are not too bad. I was expecting them to be a lot, be a lot worse. So there's that, but I think like each thing is a little bit different. For instance, like trying to get color off this purple it's a little bit less juicy if that makes sense than say this one that one like kind of like gave me a lot of color really quickly whereas this one I'm kind of working for a while and it's still not giving me too much off that color so I'm gonna make like a cool purple I'm gonna get a little bit of this red which is kind of like nice and juicy and add it to my purple to make it kind of darker. So I found this iconic scene from Studio Ghibli. You know, the Spirited Away film where they're on the train and they're driving past a house. I actually already painted this in an, another video, but I think it would be interesting to try and see like what it could look like with these cheap paints and see if I can create a similar look and feel. So they are kind of drying pretty fast. Um, it could be the paper though, a little bit more than so I'm trying to keep working with it a little bit wetter than I usually would. So far, I'm not hating how it's looking. It's kind of nice. It's not, okay, so we've got this really like yellowy island here. So I wanna mix a really yellowy green. Another tip is probably don't mix your colors on top of other colors because that probably will ruin your cheap paints, but here we go. So you can really get some good colors if you just like work them. Ooh a little bit yourself. I'm working quite quickly as well, which you can probably tell. I think you probably need to work a little bit quick with, oh shoot. Always have a handy cloth with you, basically. Filling up your mistakes. Right, so for consistency, I kind of want to stick with the color palette that I've made here. Even though there's lots of colors for me to use, if I stick with, sorry, I'm pouring my coffee. If I stick with a similar color palette, as in using a range of these colors that I've made, it will make the painting just seem like it belongs together, like all parts of the components of it belongs in the same lighting, the same scene, the same tones. So for instance, if I went in suddenly with like this really bright purple, it just would be like a little bit strange. Um, it can happen, you can always break rules, but I think it's always a good idea to try and stick to the color palette that you've created. So here I'm going to use like this purple with this to kind of make a different tone for the clouds in the distance. So I'm going to just do this and then I'm going to outline the house with it here. Also I'm going to use this as my shadows, my base of my shadows. So something cool about cheap watercolor palettes is because it's so chalky you can kind of like use a little bit of the chalkiness when it dries out as a bit of a guideline for where you want to go. So it kind of works nicely. You can make like a bit of a like texture as well to indicate like some shadows in this area. You can use a bit of dry brushing with the chalkiness and uh, it can get some interesting effects. Like obviously watercolor is probably not supposed to be used too much like that, but it doesn't mean that you can't have fun with it and try to do something a little bit different to what you were doing. So I need a bit of this orange now and I think it's looking a little bit too dark so I'm gonna go with this pink 
pinky a little bit in this corner and try and make it a little bit more pink. So here we go. So we're just trying our best really with these colors that we've been given this cheap paints but we're gonna have fun with it as well like there's no reason why it needs to be like the worst thing ever that you've ever used like you can still try to make good with what you've got if we're not having fun then what's the point right so let's do this and I'm gonna use a little bit of this to like darken the areas because when I'm looking at the Studio Ghibli clouds they have really like created like a darkness there as well and I'm gonna use some of that color on the shadow of this house to like have some cohesion again in the painting so it's not looking terrible I kind of like the effect it's giving me it's like not the worst thing ever so I'm kind of pleased with this so far you just got to work really carefully and don't like lay it down too much all at once because there's no going back with watercolor as well you just want to be chill Okay, here we go, a little bit of orange this time. Super pink cloud here. I think I'm about to get attacked by a kitty. It's gonna happen any second now. Be ready for this. <laughs> hey, my painting! Cuteness. Mochi, you cannot be here. <laughs> she just climbed up the back of the the desk she's absolutely psycho i want to do some highlights so i can kind of use this paint a bit opaquely if i keep doing the trick of like keep twisting the pigment around so you can see i'm getting like a really thick amount on my paintbrush i can kind of use it a little bit opaque which is nice and that's something you probably don't tend to get with like more expensive watercolors because it's made for like the pigment to kind of spread quite easily so there's another like advantage of cheap paints well I'm gonna say advantage because <laughs> so yeah I want to use this really opaquely because this is really a bright cloud up here oh my god she's coming back guys she's coming back she's crazy this cat is crazy don't do it <laughs> oh gee Mochi! Oh my god. So let's go back over that because she super smudged it. So you can probably see that the colours are getting a little bit muddy. And that's because I haven't changed my water in a while. So I'm going to go and pop and change that and then we'll see a difference. I'll also clean my brush. Pro tip, always clean your stuff. Lots of colour suddenly appearing and it's becoming really fluffy really bubbly which is good and uh, I'm just going to show you what it looks like on this test paper obviously we've got some bubbles there but we can work them off but it kind of makes the chalkiness go away and makes the paints last a bit longer so if I do the same thing with a color that hasn't been activated with it let's go for this like purple okay, I think there must be some on my brush <laughs> so I'm gonna get a different brush to show you so let's say this purple yeah let's do the same amount it gets a little bit bubbly but not as much as if we got with the green and then I'm gonna do the same thing where I just like try and show you the difference so you can see like it's not quite as smooth the pigment so if you want to do like a big wash of color it's kind of like better. I don't know. <laughs> it was a small tip I learned when I was younger. See, it's like super frothy. Um, more bang for your buck, I would say. A smoother color. Not sure if it's like entirely true, but I think it works a little bit.
Okay, so obviously it's not the best painting that I've ever done, but it's also not too bad. It's quite nice and it shows you that you can do a lot with what you've got. This was $5 and obviously it's a little bit chalky, but if you want to have fun with watercolors or just try them out, then maybe it is kind of the route for you. This was fun to do and I hope that you guys enjoyed this little kind of tips video. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and I uh, will appreciate that. Thanks again to my patrons. They are all these people and you guys are super lovely. I am really hoping to get more people onto Patreon so I can probably do this full time which would be awesome. But yeah, at the moment I am not. So anyway, see you guys next time and thanks for everything. Hi. Bye.